Hello and welcome to Gold and Silver Assets. I'm Diora and it's Sunday the 19th of September 2021. Platinum and Palladium seem to be quite popular with our viewers and I've had quite a few requests to cover these metals. How do these investments differ from gold and silver? And which is the most undervalued of the precious metals? Let's start by defining what a precious metal actually is. So precious metals are rare, they're naturally occurring metals that have a high economic value. They also tend to be chemically inert, and so they're resistant to corrosion or oxidation. Precious metals can be split into two main categories. Gold and silver are considered coinage metals. Then we have the platinum group metals, which are listed here. Now, you might say, oh, but you can buy platinum or palladium coins. Yeah, that's true, but they're not really considered as monetary metals. Platinum and palladium are the two that are most associated with investment vehicles. And I imagine it'll be pretty hard to find a suitable iridium investment, for example. Now, before I go any further, I must make a disclaimer. I'm not invested in platinum or palladium. Now, it's not that I think these are going to do badly. No, there are other reasons that I have. So firstly, I do try to be strategic in my approach and I don't want to spread myself too thin. There are other sectors that interest me more. And the other problem I have is having access to suitable investment vehicles in these areas. For me here, the choices seem quite limited. Obviously, it might be a different matter in the USA, for instance. The next issue is time. Now, I do have a day job that's completely unrelated to finance and I also have other hobbies and interests. And so I think investment does require time for research and we do need to keep up with what's going on in the particular sectors that you're investing in. And so the more sectors that you're involved in, then the more time is required. And for me, I don't have the time to look deeply into platinum or palladium. I also don't believe that looking at a chart is enough when making an investment. I think certainly for the timescales that I work with, understanding the fundamental aspects and the drivers of the investment is important. Now, for example, this is the chart for a stock and it's on the log scale. Now, without under understanding the sector that this stock is in, as well as the health and the prospects of the company itself, I reckon trying to predict the future price movements of this thing is pretty tricky. I mean, look, it's gone from $80 here, it's about $1 here, it came up from about 69 70 cents or something like that. Now, it could be that uh, there could be factors here, such as poor quality management, it could be a rubbish business model, or it could have unsustainable debt levels that's caused all this. But, you know, without looking into it, you have no idea. And the chart doesn't really tell you that. The chart tells you that things look bad, though, I, I guess. And the thing is, how do you know that this stock isn't going to go to zero? You know, this company could go completely bankrupt. Now, alternatively, this could just stagnate for years and years at this price level, in which case there's an opportunity cost with that as well. But of course, it's a different story if you understand the fundamentals and if you that can basically tell you whether this is undervalued or not and what the potential drivers for an upwards move could be. You know, if you can have a strong thesis that would support an upwards move, then, yeah, this could be potentially considered undervalued as well. So. Basically, the message here is that, look, I don't believe that the price of any of the precious metals is going to go to zero. But what I'm saying is that I haven't done any of the fundamental analysis regarding platinum and palladium. And so I don't really understand how those markets function and what the drivers are 
for their prices and potential you know future prospects for those metals and um, you know obviously i've been doing shows for almost two years now most of which have included some fundamental analysis and discussion of gold and also factors that relate to gold so in the rest of this show, I'm going to look at various price charts from a technical point of view. But look, please don't take any of this as investment advice. It's merely a discussion of ideas which may or may not complement your own analysis. So we'll start by looking at the pure price charts for some of these precious metals. So we'll start with platinum, and this is on the monthly scale. And so I think the first observation here is that this has been in a general uptrend since the 1970s. In terms of its character, it does have a ten tendency to spike up and then also crash down quite quickly as well. This was a nasty crash over here, but of course that came after a huge run up there. And we're clearly now in a downtrend, but... At this point, there's a breakout to the upside. So that, that, that's a positive thing there at this stage. In terms of those run-ups that we see, they're not, they're not really classically parabolic. You know, I mean, yeah, there's a bit of a curve, but it's not, it's, it's just, it's kind of got a square kind of look to it, doesn't it, like this? And the same here as well. So it kind of does that repeatedly, though. So that's interesting. And at the moment, it's not really doing behaving like that at the moment. So, as I said, we've broken out from this downtrend the trend line here. But, you know, this price spiked up and has come down again. And it kind of looks like it's trying to retest this trend line before making its next move. So... I'm just wondering if there's there's possibly a bit bit more downside to come. How far down? I don't think there's a lot more. Obviously, we've got support because of all of this price action here. And also there's some from here as well. Um, but yet yeah, there is the potential for this to go to $800 as well. So, yeah, it's hard to know where this is going to bottom out. Um, you'd probably have to go to the daily scale for that for that side of things. But yeah, it doesn't I'm not sure that that's completely over yet in terms of downside. OK, palladium. Now, palladium kind of looks more curved in terms of its look. Obviously, look, it was flat in the 80s and early 90s. And then something happened in the late 1990s. And you've got this run up here. Obviously, when you get a parabolic move, it's quite common for prices to crash down at least 70 percent. And then but of course, that was what actually formed the next parabolic move here. And this does look parabolic to me. It's quite uh, interesting to look at the volatility along that parabolic move here. And you can see quite clearly volatility goes up the higher you go. So, I mean, look at this price drop here. That was huge. And again, we're getting a relatively large price drop over here. Now, of course, the big question is, are we at the end? Is this the top of the parabola? Is that the end of the whole move? Are we going to come crashing down 70 percent down to here? Or is this parabola still in progress? Have we got further upside? Well, let's have a look and zoom in. So I've zoomed in to the price action from 2009. And with parabolas, I mean, I mean, with gold, remember, we were talking about that curve fitting idea. I haven't had time to do that here. But what tends to happen if you if you draw um, draw these line, these trend lines here you'll see that they basically get steeper as, as the parabola progresses and so you'd expect to see another steeper one further up if it's going to keep continuing and so the interesting thing to note here is that we're very very close to this trend line over here 
And so, you know, if that breaks, then of course, I think we're looking for somewhere down here, but it, it might not break, you know, and actually that's going to be one area to watch out for. If it kind of bounces off from up there, then this could potentially be continuing the, the parabola. And, you know, we'd be looking at over three and a half thousand dollars, I reckon. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand the Palladium market enough to tell you. Let's have a look at rhodium. Now, this this is an ETC, so I don't know whether that reflects the physical rhodium price or whether this is accurate in any way. This is on the London Stock Exchange, but it's the only one I could find on TradingView. But isn't this a gorgeous, gorgeous parabolic shape? This is even more curvaceous um, compared to uh, palladium. And again, you can see that huge amount of volatility. So down here, you can see tiny, tiny bars and you've got that curved look to it. As we get high, you can see the bars are getting longer and longer. And this is a massive price drop here. Um, you know, we're talking over 70 percent there. But then it bounced up pretty sharpish, didn't it? <laughs> and then it just took off for the next phase of the parabola. So again, the question is, is this the end of that move? So again, a couple of ways of doing it. One would be to do that curve fit for these lows here. We don't know if that's the low or not yet. So that will be interesting to see. But also, you know, I mean, if we've got a 70% drop before going up, the same thing could happen here as well, potentially. But look, is that realistic? I mean, that's quite a high price there, two and a half thousand dollars. Can it actually go any higher? Well, if we look at it on the log scale, so again, I've, I've just joined these two lows here. And yeah, further drop is possible, but it, it would still be along this trend. So yeah, maybe, I mean, certainly, there would be some support over here. So yeah, this could potentially drop to 700 before turning around. I mean, it, the other thing to remember with parabolic moves, as I said, with the palladium one is that you get steeper trend lines. So it might not even reach this line here. So you might end up, you know, drawing another line. And I don't know where that line, you know, will be. We won't know until the low has been reached. But this does seem to be some support kind of around here, um, maybe even here as well, you know, hard to know, hard to know. But yeah, as I said, is it realistic to think that this parabola is going to continue? Well, the way to look at that is to look at its long, long history. How does it tend to behave? So this is a 40 year rhodium, uh, rhodium price chart here. And yeah, you can see that this has a tendency to have these massive parabolic moves here. And it's happened multiple times. Some of them you've seen these vertical, vertical rises here, very rapid. But also for those investing in this, you've got to, you've got to have a strong stomach, let's say, because when it drops, boy, does it drop. Look at this one, crazy drop. And it's very, very rapid. You don't Often you're so euphoric with this kind of, you know, looking at the, your, your profits and so on that you forget to be wary at these points here as well. So, um, you know, as I always say, the higher the price goes, the more nervous you should get. But obviously it's easier said than done. OK, and at the moment, I mean, this this is from 2019, so it probably went higher than this on this chart. But look, we're nowhere near the all time high. So, yeah, the, potentially that this parabola could continue. But again, I don't know. I don't know what would drive that. So next we'll look at correlations. What uh, basically I use correlations to try and help me decide what sector does uh, things like platinum and palladium behave most like. So we'll start with platinum. And so at the top, we've got the price chart here going back to 1974. 
And at the bottom, I've done the correlation coefficients for uh, various sectors. So here I've compared it to silver, the commodities index and the S&P 500. So if we start with silver, when you've got a correlation of one, that means they they move together. They move in the same direction. And of course, minus one means they move exactly in the opposite direction. And you can see here that for most of the time, platinum behaved pretty similar to silver and to a high degree on most occasions here. So, you know, there, there are a couple of times over here and here where you've got a negative correlation. But certainly since the year 2000, let's say, it's been quite strongly positively correlated. If we look at the commodities index, again, before the year 2000, it was very up and down. It wasn't really behaving like the, the general commodities index. But that changed. And over here, it seems to behave more like an industrial metal. Um, so, I mean, maybe that's something to do with all those, you know, catalytic converters or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, now, that did flip recently, but it's gone back up again. And S&P 500, well, it, it's all over the place, isn't it? So, so there's not really much of a relationship with the general stock market. So overall, it, this platinum behaves most like silver and possibly more like uh, commodity as, as a second secondary option there. I'm not sure why that is. Let's look at palladium, and this is this looks quite different. So in terms of silver, again, it's just up and down, really. There's not really anything discernible there. And this, again, the same with the commodities index. It's kind of up and down, nothing consistent that we can see there. Out of all of them, I mean, that's the same with the S&P 500 as well, but it seems a bit more consistently like the S&P 500, I'd say. Um, certainly, you know, over the last 20 years, that seems to be its strongest correlation. But yeah, it's kind of arguable, really, isn't it? So palladium does seem to behave differently from platinum. Next, we will look at some ratio charts. And that helps give us an idea of valuations. So you get rid of the whole fiat element. And we're going to look at ratios, particularly relative to gold and silver, but as, um, as well as the S&P 500. So let's start with the platinum to gold ratio. And this has been in a downtrend since the mid 2000s, really. And so we've got this over here. Um, before that, it was in an uptrend. So what this means is that if it's in a downtrend, it means that platinum is underperforming gold. And it's been quite significant. Um, now, unfortunately, this doesn't go back into the 70s. I'll be quite interested to see what, what this ratio was back then. So I don't know if this is a historic low here. Probably not. But look, it's this is certainly well below the you know multi-decade mean i would say which would suggest that platinum is more uh, well it, it might be undervalued at this stage but look there is potential for this to drop further still it, it, here we can see that it is moving downwards let's look at palladium to gold and we get a different story here there was this massive spike here. Look at that. That's crazy. Um, so when you get a massive start, a spike like that in the ratio, then that means palladium far, far outperformed gold at that time. And you can see that um, since then we formed this curve structure here. And it basically to me looks like it's come come off the lows. Um, and here, of course, it was completely flat, flat as a pancake there. So this this in in contrast to platinum this is not at historic lows at this stage. 
let's look at the platinum to silver ratio. Now, of course, you know, a lot of people talk about how grossly undervalued silver is, and I certainly agree with that. But is platinum even more undervalued than silver? And so I think the way to look at that, again, is with the platinum to silver ratio. That's one way we could do that. And it looks pretty similar to that platinum to gold ratio, doesn't it? So again, we've been in this downtrend here. We hit a low uh, last year. But this what chart, I managed to get to go further back. So this goes back to 1980 over here. And that was a really low. And so, look, there is potential for this ratio to drop further still. So you've got to be aware of that. But look, again, you've got to also think about asymmetry. You know, how much further can this drop? Remember, this can't go to zero um, as well. But yeah, there is, there is enough of a drop in terms of historically 20 seems to be the floor. But obviously the upside is huge here. This goes up to 160. And in comparison, the palladium silver ratio doesn't look quite so uh, attractive, does it? Um, again, we had historic lows in, in 1980 over here. And again, in the late two, uh, well, mid 2000s over here. And we've got this curve here. And so, you know, this has got a lot more downside in comparison to palladium. But then, you know, look, pal uh, sorry, platinum. But then, uh, you know, if you think about the nature of palladium, that seems to be a lot more parabolic as well. So there is quite a bit of upside. This is this is a tricky one, really. And so this is where I'd need to look more at the fundamentals to get an idea of what's going on here. But... I guess the takeaway here is this is not at historic lows yet at this point. I mean, maybe, look, this is a steep drop here. And then we've got this kind of possible flag here. So maybe that's going to drop again. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the other potential is that this is, you know, a cup here and and this is kind of on the way up. Yeah, look. That's, that's what I mean. Chart, charts don't tell you everything here. And there's a lot of subjectivity involved. What about the platinum to palladium ratio? Well, look, this, this shows just how bad things are for platinum here, really, doesn't it? I think on all the ch ratio charts we've shown, platinum is at at all close to historic lows here and that's certainly the case in relation to palladium and this is probably getting as close to zero as you can get here isn't it remember this can't go to zero so the asymmetry here is outstanding i would say you know there's not masses of downside in terms of the ratio but there's a huge amount of upside so if, if you were to hold palladium, this would suggest that we're getting close to or at a good time to swap it for platinum. That's what this chart suggests to me anyway. And this was just, a, just an interesting thing that I'm just throwing out there. I don't fully understand what this means, but... What I've drawn here, so I've got that same platinum to palladium ratio shown in the bars here. And in orange is the gold to silver ratio. And it's interesting because kind of before, before this point here, roughly, you can see that they kind of move in the same direction, you know. So this moved down and this moved down, this moved up and this moved up. And, and and the same here as well. So, you know, they, they seem to be positively correlated most of the time, as we can see by the correlation coefficient here. But since the kind of around 2011, 2013-ish, they're going in opposite directions completely, aren't they? Look at that. And that's shown, and this is the most strongly negatively correlated 
it's been this whole time. And what's the reason for that? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that. But obviously something's changed at that point to affect these ratios and for them to be so far apart. Given, given how low this ratio is and given how high this ratio spiked, I would kind of expect these to move towards each other from here. And that would still maintain that negative correlation as well. Um, but again, what would drive that? Interesting, interesting. Let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas and discussion about that. Let's move on. So this is the platinum to S&P 500 ratio on the monthly scale. And again, platinum is in the doldrums. It's actually a historic low. It's actually below this line that I've drawn. So this line was drawn to mark this low and we've actually it's hard to see, but we've just poked below it. So. So this is a multi multi decade low here. So again, it looks like platinum is highly undervalued compared to the S&P 500. Now, when I'm talking about these these ratios and so on, just because it's low, it doesn't mean it can't stay low. It, you know, potentially it could just languish sideways for years and years. So, you know, don't take this to mean that this is going to go up immediately or, you know, or do something like this. We, we don't know that. And that's why you need to complement these things with multiple other forms of analysis, I think. Um, as we saw here, look, you know, we didn't get that big spike that we got in the 70s here. It just kind of rose gradually and then dipped down again. Um, but, you know, this does tell us that it's undervalued relative to the stock market. And palladium, I thought was quite interesting. This is the palladium to S&P 500 chart and and look over here this was a, a a really high level here and so you know when we get a drop in this ratio then it means that palladium is underperforming the s p 500 and it's kind of underperformed for a long time but it seems i've drawn this curve here and it it's kind of seems to be following this curve now, when I draw this curve, OK, it looks great here. But if you were to draw it yourself, it is very subjective and, you know, you fiddle with it and so on. And this line here could be further up. It could be a bit further down. It just depends how you how you uh, draw it. And so you'll see when you try, try playing around with it yourself, um, maybe try putting this ratio in and try and draw one of these curves and you'll see exactly what I mean. So I'm not saying that this ratio is going to drop further. It might do. It just depends on, you know, how well this curve has been drawn. I think a much better way would be to do that curve fit analysis that, that I've been doing for gold because it just removes that subjectivity there. But interesting, it kind of looks like we're close. If this if this curve is is correct, that we're close um, to the end of this dip and potentially palladium could out uh, in, improve its performance compared to the S&P 500. But who knows? It, wouldn't it be interesting if we got some symmetry here, you know? Um, then we'd be looking at something like something like like that. <laughs> that would be crazy, wouldn't it? But look, we can't predict such things. I don't know. I don't know. OK, so in conclusion, from all those charts, I'm getting the impression that platinum is probably one of the, the more undervalued of the precious metals, probably with silver a close second. Um, but as I said, look, I don't know what the fundamental drivers for platinum are. I don't know how the market works and so I think those are really important to consider before you think about investing in platinum. You've also got to think what's a suitable vehicle for you to invest in in the um, any potential price rise. 
So obviously there are lots of options. You could go for physical, and as I said, they do sell coins and bars um, of platinum. But also, you know, there's going to be ETFs, options, futures contracts, if, if you know how to use those. Um, and then, of course, you could go for the mine, platinum miners, mining stocks. But again, that requires a lot of knowledge in terms of, you know, the management teams. And then, of course, you're looking at the subcategories of producers, developers and very, very, very highly speculative explorers. So there, there is a lot of work to do if you are investing in those and, and you know, don't don't just brush it off by looking at the charts. I don't think it's enough if you want to really um, avoid relying on luck, really, I think. OK, well, I hope you found that helpful. As I said, it's not an area that I'm particularly into, but the idea of this was to, just to talk about how to look at charts and give you some ideas of different ways of looking at things. Next up, the market update. Let's start with gold priced in US dollars on the daily scale. And last week we got that drop that I was talking about last week. So where to from here? Um, so there's a few things to talk about here. So remember that I mentioned around the 1750 levels where I thought it would drop to and it's reached that. And that was because of this price action here. And of course, here it's shown um, a reversal at that point as well. So I thought that would be a bit of a support area. And so now the question is, where do we go from here? Are we going to plummet and be become, you know, super bearish here? Or are we going to reverse and go upwards or something in between? My answer is something in between at the moment. It feels like it wants to potentially drop a tiny bit more. Um, we do have an indecision candle over here which is a positive thing, I guess. But if you look here, you see there is a range of support. It's not just, you know, a single line. And so that would fit within this area here. And I've also drawn this pitchfork over here. Now, one of the th questions I've got is because obviously this, these are, are pretty much the same level. So which do you place this first point on this one or this one? It doesn't make a huge difference in this case, but uh, yeah, I'm interested to know, how do you pick the point in this case here? Anyway, as far as this pitchfork goes, then if it were to drop further, we'd be looking at a reversal at this point in all, uh, if we are going to get a reversal. So of course, that would fit because you do still have support over here and kind of over here as well. It wicked below that, which I thought was a, a positive thing as well. So if we do drop further, we really if we if we are uh, hoping for price action to go upwards, we do need to see a reversal before around the 17, 25, 26, that kind of area. Of course, if we drop through that, I think I think I'd be very concerned. And I think the, the big problem is going to be this line here. We've had a few bounces off of it, but I don't think we're going to be lucky this time. So, you know, if we get anywhere close to this line and I would say, you know, if we drop below that 1725 level, I think there's going to be much bigger problems ahead for gold. And, you know, we're looking for much lower levels within this channel. So um, you'd have to go on the weekly chart to, to see that or see my previous videos. Okay, will this reversal occur? Look, I don't know, but what, what we're doing here is setting kind of targets and kind of limits of where we change our mind here. Interesting though, if you look here, I mean, potentially this could be an inverse head and shoulders here that's forming. If that were the case, of course, the neckline would be over here, which fits in with 
this point here, I guess. I guess it depends at what point this turns around and how long it takes. Um, the big one we're looking for is a breakout above this trend line here. And again, what that number is will depend on the timing of that move. But look, if, if, if this head and shoulders is correct, the target's going to be up towards the 2000 level at that point. Okay. Now, um, US dollar index also, I mentioned that I thought there was a bit more upside and we were talking about it potentially touching this trend line. It's pretty close to touching it again uh, this time as well. Here it didn't quite touch it. Here it's a bit closer. So where to from here for the dollar index? As I said, I'm expecting a turnaround at some point around here. Now, I don't know how accurate this trend line is going to be. I'm a lot more confident about this line here being resistance because it's been long term. Now, obviously here it just poked above and came below. And, you know, of course, these things are never absolutely perfect. Um, and so, you know, there are a couple of things that could happen. One is this, this could kind of wick up above here and then come down. Or it could be, I mean, this is quite a strong green candle here. So unless we get a, a, an equally strong red candle on Monday, I, I think a bit more upward movement is likely. And so that's either going to be in the form of a, uh, a long upper wick here, or we could even go up to touch this line here before making the turn. But yeah, I still think I still think that turn is going to happen. Now, of course, this has a bearing on silver as well. And yeah, silver got pretty hammered and we actually broke this low here. And remember that this is recently, well, since March, been very, very highly negatively correlated to the DXY. So when the DXY goes up, this goes down, basically. And so here I thought, let's let's have a look at the volume by price uh, information here. So I started it in that March low here and finished it at the recent price action. And you can see that getting past that 26, 26, 20, 26, roughly dollar level for silver is going to be pretty important if we can get above there. You can see that there's been a lot of price action in that area, and that has been an important level for quite a while now. The other important level, I think, is going to be 22, and we're getting pretty close to it. So as you can see, this is the, the last biggish bar we've got. Below that, we've got thin air. Yeah, very little price action. And here is because this moved up so sharply and quickly. So um, I reckon if we if we go significantly below 22, then, you know, I think the next next bounce will be 20. And then but I think there'll be support at around 19 if we if we go much below that. Are we going to do that? Well, again, it depends how that US dollar index goes, you know, um, at what point do we get the turnaround in that? But at the moment, we need this support to hold. OK, now um, the other thing to remember is silver is perfectly capable of doing some very, very rapid reversals without without you know people even noticing and realizing it you know um i mean if you look here we got a, this v-shape recovery which i did i didn't catch that at all um at the time and so you know these things can they can just turn around really really quickly and again we've got another example here and here so we don't know for sure but of course you know i think it's foolish to call a reversal before uh, you've got any signals of that occurring, <laughs> you know, and at the moment there's no signals at the moment. So all we can do is say, look, where, where's the next support area? And then we have the GDX. So for this one, I thought let's let's do the modified pitchfork here. So um, I've got a couple of things here. So last week we'd, uh, we'd been talking about this this down sloping channel. So the way I drew that was to join these two lows and then extend that upwards to this high to give that channel. 
And um, that midline there has been respected quite well. You can see that it moves up and down, bounced up uh, above it, and then has been kind of going up and down. But it hasn't stayed above that midline for any significant time. Every time it tries to go above, it just gets smacked down again. And so now we haven't reached the bottom of that channel yet. And so I think we might we might drop a bit further for the GDX, I'm afraid. Um, we've already made a new lower low. And remember, we are still in a downtrend. So I can't say that, that things are going to reverse from here. So as I said, we've got to look at support and resistance levels and other things. And so... Um, so the next thing, so one possible target is going to be the, the lower end of this trend channel here, which is around, I think it's about 28.50 here. I'll put a little cross there for you. But um, the other thing is, so I've got this modified shift pitchfork. And again, you can see that it kind of bounced off that midline. And then when it broke through it, it that became resistance. And so we're falling down. So the next uh, point to look for a potential reversal would be here. But look, I'm afraid to say that if it goes any lower than that, then we'd be looking down here at around the 26-ish level here. So, you know, and I can't say that's not going to happen because we are in a downtrend. So we have to just watch out for that. Um, remember, this has been niggling me for ages and ages, even, even when this was going up, you know, and that's this gap here. Now, that doesn't have to fill. Sometimes um, gaps can take years and years to fill. I don't know that. Uh, so, I mean, there might be some gaps that may never fill. I guess we'll never know because you can never say never. But yeah, I just always got that in the back of my mind here. So really, yeah, we're just waiting to see where we're getting any signs of reversal. At the moment, I'm not seeing any. But look, one thing I would say is I'm not expecting a plummet down to the bottom here. Uh, I'll be very surprised if that happens. And finally, we've got the junior miners. And yeah, this is, this is getting boring, isn't it? Look, look at how long this has been going on. Um, but that's good for shaking out all, all the bulls. I mean, are there any bulls remaining out there? Is there anyone left out there? Um, I hear that the recent Denver Gold Conference was pretty empty. I've seen lots of pictures of empty, uh, empty conference rooms there. So, you know, that's a sentiment indicator, I guess. I mean, this is the kind of price action that really grinds people down. Um, so for this one, I thought we'd use the distance from the 200 day moving average. And what I've done is um, I've drawn it from the furthest peak here. So that was the highest it got above its moving average. And you can see that it's kind of been trending downwards, even though this has kind of been more sideways. And so at the moment, we remain in that downtrend. Now, we haven't quite touched the bottom of, of this yet. And look, if we don't touch the bottom and start moving up and make higher highs on this, that will be a good sign. But what we really, really need to do is see this go above the zero point here, really. And then we'll uh, have a bit more confidence about a reversal here. Now, the other thing, remember I said about this gap, which I didn't like when it happened at the time. And of course, it came back and retested that uh, well, sorry, I filled that gap. But now we've got two gaps above. So interestingly, the, um, in GDX, we got a lower low this this uh, last day. But here we've got a higher low compared to this. And so, you know, considering the big move that silver made downwards, this, this hasn't been too bad, actually, considering. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's still in the air about whether we've got a reversal at this stage, you know, um, we need to, we need this lower, this higher low to be confirmed by upwards 
price movement and we need to get above here for, for that to be confirmed. Um, right, so that's it from me for this week. All the best and see you next week. Bye.